Today, we know that Venus is a hellishly hot planet with crushing atmospheric pressure and even sulfuric acid rain, not exactly conducive to life. But that's not what scientists used to think. It was known fairly early on that Venus was covered in clouds. And so a natural assumption is, oh, clouds, that must mean there's water because you know, clouds on the Earth are water vapor. So they thought it was possibly a swampy planet, maybe teeming with vegetation, a lush sort of tropical parrot, not necessarily paradise, but tropical. Kind of like in the equatorial jungles on Earth because it's close to the sun, it's covered with clouds. Could be kind of an interesting place, you know, Earth's sister planet, about the same size. So there were some wild speculations that it might have amazing jungles and perhaps even life. Looking at Venus, there's, at first glance, no reason to expect that there's not sort of a Cenozoic jungle underneath those clouds. Interestingly, it was possible to sort of be scientifically respectable and imagine that Venus had an Earth-like conditions under the clouds. So there was this very interesting period in history where it was possible to in a realistic way, entertain Earth-like conditions on Venus. Certainly in the literature from the 30s and 40s, there's sort of a trope of, of raining jungle Venus beneath the clouds. Science fiction really took off with the idea of there being life on Venus. Scientists didn't exclude the possibility of life. Sci-fi writers from Edgar Rice Burroughs to Robert Heinlein to Isaac Asimov and Ray Bradbury imagined Venus as an exotic, rainy, inhabitable planet, though Venusians never became as popular or scary as little green men from Mars. Venus never captured the imagination the way Mars did because simply the fact you can't see beneath the clouds it presents this completely opaque face, whereas Mars shows these seasonal variations, it shows these dusky markings, and so Mars is much more tantalizing when viewed through the telescope with the polar caps and the clouds and the markings, whereas Venus is just a featureless ball. And so it's true that People thought perhaps there was jungle-like conditions under the Venusian clouds, but it was never in the popular imagination the way Mars was. As late as the 1960s, the Soviets were designing probes that could splash down in a Venusian ocean. But finally, the idea of a warm, watery Venus came crashing down to Earth. In the early 1960s, the Mariner spacecraft first made temperature measurements of the surface of Venus. They could see that the, the clouds were not water clouds, they were probably sulfuric acid. They could see that the temperature beneath the clouds was incredibly high, much hotter than anything we'd anticipated, and it wasn't a very hospitable place at all, they discovered. The temperatures are above 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and so, you know, no life as we know it would be possible, no steamy jungles full of, you know, plants and vines and animals and things like that. Sorry. 